In today's video, I'm going to teach you how you can let the user choose a directory from a dialog, from a system like dialog, so they don't need to copy and paste it manually. Really, really useful. All right, guys. So, so first of all, we need to import something. Well, dialog import ask directory, which is the only thing that we need. Okay. So ask directory actually opens, opens a dialog where the user can actually select the folder, select the directory that they want to use and that returns the path. Okay. That returns the string, the path of the folder. Okay. So we can save it in the path variable and we can call us directory. Okay. Then we can print the path. Okay. And if you run it, you'll see that it opens this thing right here. Okay. This is the folder. So nothing on that. I don't have a folder, but if we create a folder right here, so cancel, as you can see, it doesn't return anything because I've canceled. So if we add a folder here and we call it test, something like that, and then we recall it this test. Okay. As you can see, home, Fabio, desktop, dial, select, which is the folder, which is the path to that folder. Okay. So really, really cool. Instead of having the user to actually go to the, the folder, select the path and write it, you can just do that and you've got the path. Okay. So, so cool. But as a rule of thumb, I actually use a row string. I convert it to a row string. So if it contains with characters, escape characters and stuff like that, especially in Windows, you don't have to worry about that. Okay. So I actually do something like this. I do something like path equal row string. It leaves the string as is. I can use format path or I can use an F string like that, which could be a little bit more confusing because, you know, you have R, F, stuff like that. Or you could even do something like in the same line. So R, then like that, then format, then as directory, for example. You could do something like that. And you could do something, you could get this and do something like, like this which would be exactly the same thing. Okay. So let's comment this out because now we're going to have a look at a few parameters that you can pass to the function that can change a little bit things just a tiny bit. Okay. So first of all, you've got, let's use format, which makes things a little bit less confusing as directory. So first of all, there's the title. Okay. Title, my title. Okay. If you call that, that's clear. If you call that, you can see that now you've got my title here. Okay. Really, really cool. Then you can set the initial directory. Here I'm using a row string again for the reason I told you. And here I could do something like home Fabio desktop dialog, which is already actually the, the folder I am in. So that should actually exactly, as you can see this folder, but if here I were to put, you know, to write another folder, it would start from desktop. If I were to actually leave desktop like that, they would, you know, start the dialogue from the desktop directory, which could be useful. Okay. So just to, to show you one thing, if I were to use a windows path and I were to actually copy and paste it from, you know, the Explorer, that would be something like, like this users. Okay. So as you can see here, you've got an escape character. If you didn't have the R, 
So this wouldn't actually work, okay? Because this is this would be interpreted as an escape character, and you don't want that. So if you use the raw string, that goes away, okay? So just a side note to show you why I've actually used R, and I'm not using Windows, but I still do that because you know who knows if something could go wrong, okay? You never go wrong if you use a raw string. Okay, let's comment this out. So then, last but not least, the must exist uh, parameter. So as you can see, when I'm choosing a folder, let's do something like dialog. So we go that. Okay, let's run it. As you can see here, I I could change something like new, and this would work. Okay, this would work. Okay, this would work. We are not printing it, so you don't see that. Let's actually print it so you can see that. I don't know why it comes out to the other screen, but never mind. So let's try new. Okay, as you can see, you've got a new path. This could be useful if you, I don't know, wanted the to create a new directory, something like that. But if you want the user to select an existing one, you should set this must exist uh, parameter to true so it doesn't let you do something do what we've just done okay so let's actually try that and see must actually let's delete this so we've got all on the screen must exist equal true okay so now if we run that This works, okay, but if I were to do something like new, as you can see, it doesn't let me click on OK, okay? Now, yes. So must exist is really, really useful if you want the user to actually select an existing folder and not like creating folders and stuff like that. So this is pretty, pretty handy, okay? Of course, by the way, you should validate if the user selected something because if the user cancels the operation, as you could see, you don't get anything. So let's actually run this, cancel. As you can see, an empty tuple, okay? And you shouldn't actually proceed with the, with the program if the user didn't select a right folder because you need the right folder, of course. Okay, so check out my video on how to validate user inputs. I leave the link in the cards up above and in the description box down below. And on that video, I actually teach you how you can validate user inputs, but you could do the same thing, but instead of using the input, you could use the path that you get from us directory and validate that and, and keep asking the user for a path until they actually select a path. So uh, something like, if not path, then you can do something like enter a valid path, or actually select a path to continue, and then it reopens the dialogues and so on and so forth.